Welcome to the Challenger Podcast. I'm Dave Glazer in Denver, Colorado. Today's episode is one of my favorites I've ever recorded. Gail Evans is a big fan of astrology, and she joins me today on the podcast to kind of show us how to layer the Enneagram with our astrology signs and our chart. So what Gail and I chose to do is actually jump on Facebook Live and Instagram Live a couple of weeks back and actually host a live event for our audience members in a -a one-of-a-kind live event on Instagram and Facebook where we ask each other questions. We dig into her two-wing three personality and my eight-wing seven with a sexual subtype as we layer that with our astrology signs as well. So I didn't know much about my astrology chart, but uh, apparently uh, my sun is a Cancer, my moon is a Leo, and... Uh, The third one is Aquarius, which gives me a whole new perspective and dimension of self-awareness. So if you have a good time listening to today's episode, Gail and I are actually going to team up and host a, a webinar in the near future where we're going to go into your astrology charts and your Enneagram personality type and do this process with you all live uh, via webinars. So if you're interested in getting a little bit more self-awareness through your astrology chart and your Enneagram type, click the link below in our show notes and uh, we'll get you signed up absolutely free. That event is happening soon, so don't miss out. As always, if you get a ton of value out of today's conversation, please share it with one person that you believe would have a good time, laugh a little bit, and dig a little bit deeper into their own self-awareness. So share this episode with them today. While we're at it, I have a huge ask of you. Uh, Please head on over to Spotify, iTunes, or wherever it is that you listen to this podcast and give us a five-star rating and a written review. It really goes a long way to help us get the message of the podcast out to more people. Without further delay, let's get into today's live episode with Gail Evans. Hello, everyone on Instagram. I'm here today with Dave Glaser from the Challenger Podcast. We're going to be talking about astrology and the um the enneagram which dave's very into and he can help me because i still am not totally up to speed on the enneagram i have read little bits hi natalie so we're on facebook live and we're also on instagram live uh dave i don't know whether you just need to find me probably on instagram yeah let me see what's uh let me see what's happening here on insta you know i i need to look into this simulcast thing (laughs) because you're crushing my tech uh um, you're crushing my technology (laughs) expertise (laughs) that's okay it's a bit weird going live on two platforms i'm not completely comfortable with it myself okay Okay. all right where do you want to start let's start with you did you discover whether or not you were a uh, helper or an achiever on the enneagram yeah i still think i'm a two I still see the helper thing and but the achiever thing like we talked about this before like i really resonate with the achiever when it comes down to my work self like you know um let's say the helper part of me <laughs> kind of vanishes for a little bit and i'm a, and i'm a bit more forceful when i'm coaching Mm. Like, you know, so my clients would absolutely see, you know, that I have that. And I think I said that before, that kind of Scottish thing where I'm a little bit blunt. Whereas when I'm in my helper position, I'm I'm probably not doing that, you know, because I guess the helper doesn't want to be too blunt because then they're not being helpful and they're not fitting in, you know. So mm-hmm. I would say, I would still say that. But I, but I do maybe see, and I don't know whether you would agree with me, that perhaps the wing on the Enneagram is a kind of um, evolution. Because that's how I saw it when we were going through it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it's an, it's an additional way to look at yourself. And what I, hear, what I hear you sharing is actually a tendency of the helper. Okay. Um, let's just say like you're working with a group of clients or a particular client for a long period of time and the growth and the changes just aren't happening. You know, you're both feeling a little bit stuck. Okay. And, and the helper has a tendency to personalize and internalize that. And so there's a little bit of like angst or resentment that builds up subconsciously. 
Um, yeah. So that's maybe what you're seeing from the helper perspective of mm -hmm. when you're when you're coaching people, when you're helping people, and they're just not getting it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How's that I land? Like, go for the jocular, you know, a little bit of that. I mean, I'm still compassionate for sure, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'm sure that um, my clients would also see that. But I do. Yeah, I do feel like that three kind of comes in and it's a little bit more like, okay, can we just get, how do we get around that bullshit thing that's sitting mm. there, you know, mm -hmm. your victimization or, you know, your anger that if you're blaming everybody, like you're blaming your mother and it's now 20 years later and, you know, you're still blaming her for this thing that happened when you were 10. And, and I do believe that that's necessary sometimes because it's all too easy to be stuck in that position of blaming and shaming and feeling like a victim you know? we are Great. technically savvy as of right now hi desiree wanted to say hi uh, hello everyone we're just i think actually do you know what it's like we're drunk <laughs> it's it's 10 15 here in the morning in denver and <laughs> and i i kind of wish you know it, it feels like summer. It feels like patio, uh, take a break, just cut out of work kind of a day. It's gorgeous here. Let's go get a uh, soda water and get drunk. You don't drink though, right? No, I don't me drink. neither. I, don't need it. I just look like I'm drunk. You don't drink either. Oh, so funny. There you go. We don't even need alcohol guys. We're just as we are. We're just as crazy as we are in the heat. There you go. Right. Okay. Yeah, I love what I love what you were saying earlier about the enneagram showing up and the uh, the achiever coming in as an influence in yeah. your in your life of like, come on, we we got to keep the ball moving here. And and I remember you're quite successful as a singer. Yes, and that would be the achiever showing up in your life as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because I think when we spoke about that before, because I had listened through. And I said to Dave, I was like, we talked about so many things on that last live stream. That was crazy. I don't know how we fitted that in, but obviously we both love to talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like, I do see that thing of, because uh, I think you'd asked me at the time about, was I doing it, the singing thing? Was that from like pride or was that from like looking for love? And, and I guess for me, I recognize that loads of my language is about connection and community. And for me, it's that thing, like music is also that, it's like connection and community and also being seen. Cause I do think that all artists are, you know, all creatives have this desire to be seen and perhaps they weren't met fully as children mm. in being seen. You know, I do see that in a lot of, you know, eclectic artistic creative, types you know yeah i see that as well and and what i hear you describing is another layer to the enneagram we we have your yeah. helper personality type mm -hmm. with the achiever wing and that's great to know but what i hear about you describing in the connection is a subtype there's three there's okay. sexual social and self-preservation and the sexual subtype is a lot like my own where i crave one-to-one -one connection Okay, this is going somewhere that I didn't think it was going to go. <laughs> Explain this to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. this is interesting. Yeah, right. I'll okay. I'll describe it. I'll describe it from my world and we'll see if it reflects and resonates with you. Okay. So yeah. I'm a challenger with an enthusiast mm -hmm. wing, so an eight wing seven. Um, but yeah. my subtype is the sexual subtype, which means I crave one-to-one -one connection. Okay. So if I could just succinctly say how that shows up for me is that I'm very intense about going after things that I love and I have a fear of missing out on those things. So that encourages my subconscious to crave one-on-one -on -one connection. Okay. But why is it sexual? It's kind of a misleading subtype. Uh, okay. The other way to say it is one to one, like okay. mm -hmm. sexual or one to one subtype. And the other two are very are very clear. The social subtype for the helper mm -hmm. shows up as the hostess with the mostess. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I have done that before. I was doing my own thing. 
I was very much like I'm the person doing the thing for the other person who's the kind of, let's say, the star. And I would be like making sure everyone was okay and everyone was coming in and tickets would be sold and all of that kind of thing. That sort of, yeah. So I relate to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But also that, that what you just said about the sexual subtype, I, I definitely relate to that. Absolutely. Like, oh yeah. Like I, as soon as you said it, it was like, oh, that's me. Uh -huh. Like there's something about that one-to-one -one connection that I'm not saying I don't get amazing connections with other people, but there's like a whole other level of myself that I can meet in that space. Yeah. Hopefully with the right mm -hmm. person, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, right kind of person. Uh, yeah, definitely resonates with me too. As the challenger, I really like a close knit group of my power circle, you know, yeah. my circle of influence is really small and I crave that one-to-one -one connection with all of them whether that be individually yeah. Yeah. or within our small group. Mm -hmm. So so when I do men's work, the smaller the better. Okay. What why is that for you? Like what what does it what does it feel like for you? Mm. Such a it's, feminine question <laughs> to ask. No, I, I I really appreciate that lens because when we do men's work in a group, that mm -hmm. helps us get into our feminine. So okay. we can actually, so we can actually surrender yeah. more to the work, right? So, yeah. to answer your direct question, I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Is when the group gets too large, I have a hard time being vulnerable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But when I have my okay. small group of influence, my power circle, I can be very strong and vulnerable, mm -hmm. and uh, I can see it as a strength and not a weakness. There. Okay. Yeah, and then probably it's easier to lead in that place. Also. I feel more empowered. Yeah, I feel more like my mm -hmm. authentic self and I can lead authentically yeah. in that. Yeah, good yeah. question. Yeah, I can relate to that because I do see that, I guess, within my courses with my clients. I like that thing of like we start to feel like a kind of family, you know? Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> you know? There's all of that. So I, I can relate to that somewhat. I think it gets harder the the bigger the crowds. It's like there's more distance. Some people like that. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly enjoy that. I like the depth. So even within my friend circle, if we're not going deep, then there's almost the question of what's the point? Like oh, exactly. Of, do you know what I mean? So I'm just yeah. like, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about the television you know something on tv <laughs> can't right. do that for long you know just to right for a while mm -hmm. yeah definitely you know like let's just talk about men for a second right yeah, yeah. where you you find a group of guys getting together to watch a sporting event right yeah and it's very surface level when we do that like oh yeah we just scored rah 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 we're cheering for our team high fives and that's really connecting for the masculine. Yeah. And then when you start to peel back the layers of your own self, mm -hmm. you start to understand that that's not deep enough anymore. But here's the trick. The trick is to grow with that same group of men over time. Mm -hmm. So like, okay. I'll give you an example. This yeah. came up in my life a couple of weeks ago where mm -hmm. I was a part of a men's group for a year and I was there to build better relationships with other men. And after a year, I got two really great friendships out of that group. And we met up for the Avalanche game two weeks ago on a Friday yeah. night. First time out in a bar in a year, right? And we were able to watch the game, cheer them on, and get deep at the table okay. in conversation. So it was like for my challenger with an enthusiast wing and my one-to-one -one <laughs> sexual connection, I'm like... I'm good for another year. Like that fills me up so much. Yeah, I totally, totally get that. I understand that. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And also I think as well, like um, sort of dipping into the astrology part, right? So for those of you who are like, oh, tell me about my astrology. We won't be able to do that today, but I will talk about Dave's astrology <laughs> so that he can get into that today. Uh, you're like a cancer son. So... You know, as I said before, it's that cancer is all about it's the kind of mother energy. It's nurturing. It wants family connections, which means intimate connections, you know, 
and it the the flip side of it it can also be kind of moody <laughs> it's highly true intuitive, that <laughs> moody, right um but highly intuitive and really desires connection and so even the way that you're describing that connection with the guys and the intimacy of that and you know the fact that you're going deep with that cancer needs that like a cancer person they don't really get off on shallow either oh, you know they yeah. might play that game mm. they might go and try and play that game but it doesn't do anything for them yeah <laughs> right as many people do you know there's there's certain um star signs who will try and play the game especially let's say in relationships of being casual and there are some star signs that can do it but there are other ones that really can't. Right. Cancer the cancer is, is not one of them. <laughs> no, Taurus is another one. Taurus okay. Can look really stubborn. Cancer mm. is more moody. You know, like, oh, I don't need you. You know, you've pissed me off. I won't talk to you for two days, you know, or a week. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're, you're like describing my day today. Like I just, I just met with my group of men and I was telling them a story about me being moody and like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to create distance because I'm so moody. Oh. Yeah, you know, it's so, so common and a cancerian. Spot on. <laughs> like the, the thing with the cancerian, it's like it's to learn to be like alert, allow your mood because there's no point in trying to deny it, right? Like we know that with all the work that we do, right? And anyone who's watching that knows that that when mm -hmm. you try to avoid the part of self, it just becomes bigger. So you don't avoid it, right. but the difference would then be your ability to communicate what's going on for you. Like, so you could say, like, I'm a moody arsehole right now <laughs> and I just, I can't speak. Like I can't talk. Give me however long you know that you need. When, if it's a whole day, then as long as you say that, then you're in integrity and, and you don't feel so shit about that moodiness. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 24 what? hours seems to be the maximum amount of time that you can take okay. a break for being a moody little, what'd you call it, an arsehole? <laughs> arsehole. <laughs> or asshole, whatever, however you want to say. <laughs> I love it. So um, great. Yeah. Yeah, it's like me to a T. That, but so that's the thing with, with what you were saying about that connection and going deep. Like uh, there's certain types of people who just need that. Like I have a Scorpio moon, right? Which is your moon sign for those that don't know is your first self so you'll listen to you know things about astrology and you'll look up things about your sun sign and you might relate to it or you might not like i absolutely did not relate to a capricorn sun which i am born 4th of january right i won't tell you the year but anyway so <laughs> well, I'm like, born 4th of january right and um and I did not relate to that because Capricorn is like the father energy. So it's the opposite of the cancer energy. It's all about where are we going in life? How are we getting there? What are the steps that are required? And Capricorn will keep plodding, right? It's not like um, Aries, which will be like, okay, I'm going to get there and take all the shortcuts. Capricorn wants to do it properly, has to do all the steps, you know, and get up the mountain, even if it takes 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it's all about business and, you know, money. And, and I just, I actually used to say I don't care about money. Like it was the total opposite. So when my Scorpio moon, it was all about, I wanted the depth, right? I still want that because it's still part of me, right? So Scorpio moon, like all of the, the water signs, like Pisces is the same. We want depth. We want connection in that way. And if we don't have that, then we're kind of happy to just, leave it alone <laughs> like we won't even like put ourselves in a situation where okay this shallow and that will do it it will never ever do never so if you've got pisces in your chart somewhere or especially a moon sign cancer or scorpio you're not going to be able to do shallow connections in life in general and especially in intimacy mm. it just won't do mm. you know? yeah totally relate to yeah. that yeah I was just going to say, but obviously there's other parts in our chart. So sometimes we have a conflict, right? And so with Dave's chart, Dave's got a Leo moon, which is also super emotional, but in a different way, mm -hmm. right? Leo's path, like the path of a, of a true Leo is all about living from the heart, right? It's like where you put your heart on your sleeve and live from there. Don't hide that anymore. You know, don't become the cowardly lion who doesn't know that 
his courage is there all the time, right? The path of the Leo kind of is, that's like embracing your courage to live from the heart. And then the, the extreme that I've said to you before is like the narcissist who's like out there, like just look at me and trying to shine, but with no heart. Mm. So the path of the Leo is actually embracing the heart. So you have that, like, so that's you. So as a little boy, I'm absolutely sure you were a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> in in what way? What do you mean? <laughs> um, in this sense, well, I mean, I guess if you if your cancer was kind of there, um, even though it's your sun sign, and I'll, I'll explain more of that in a minute, but if your cancer was more present, then Cancerians actually often struggle in large crowds, right? They don't, they, they kind of are introverted. Depending on your rising sign, you might get away with looking like an extrovert, but you're actually introverted, right? But a Leo, if you have a Leo moon, then let's just say perhaps if there's if there's like a strong connection to that Leo energy, you'd want to be seen. You might still have an introverted part because you've got the Cancerian there, but you would want to be seen. So you would do things in order to be seen. The negative part of that could be, I'm not seen, so I'm going to go and set something alight. <laughs> you know? Ah, uh, got yeah. it, got it. I'm yeah. going to blow it. I'm going to blow it up because yeah. I'm not feeling seen. And yeah, yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah. So the so Leo, Leo actually desires to be seen. Probably, I mean, all people desire to be seen. Let's say that. But Leo in itself has a requirement to be seen because it ha when it lives from the heart it's supposed to inspire others to do the same so that requires being seen right mm -hmm. you can't just tell people to do it you actually have to be it so you there's a lot of emotional stuff there but your rising sign the aquarian yeah is very very different <laughs> very good yeah, let's dig into that in a second because I, I want to reflect back on how the Cancer and the Leo and my Enneagram Challenger personality type are yes. all kind of just like a ref they're they're encapsulating my whole self. So okay. what I what I heard you say about the Leo is that they're they really do want to be seen, and the path to do that is to wear my heart on my sleeve. Did I hear you correctly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is the challenger's biggest fear, but it is also the path to most growth is to okay. be seen, be vulnerable, and put mm -hmm. myself out there, whether that be in a leadership role at work or a leadership role in a relationship okay. or just my true authentic self being out there. You're talking about my greatest fears, but also my pr greatest growth path yeah, along the way. Yes, right. very much so. Yeah, because in order to really share your heart with a partner, with your family, right, with, with your friends, you have to be willing to be vulnerable. And that for many people, you know, not just the Leo moon, but for many people is difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. And what you'll, you might find, particularly because your, your Aquarius rising, right, is the face of how you are seen, right? Okay. Aquarius is very different from Leo. Again, you know, it's, it's, they kind of almost call it the alien, right? It's like, it's the analytical thinker, but it's also the visionary, like in a humanitarian kind of way. Like Aquarius really cares about how the planet is functioning. It's the technological, advancement you know it's that it's that part that wants like the best okay, okay. Mm -hmm. and when it's kind of striving for the best for humanity it can't do close connection right okay so what so some astrologers will say that that rising sign is like your mask so it's the mask that you wear i it is that, but I kind of find that that's also a little bit debilitating. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's like the ego, right? And it is, right? So let me backtrack a little bit. So how I would say this is your moon sign is your emotional self, your first self, which relates to the inner child and also your feminine energy, all of your feeling, your intuition, your creativity, so the more you can tap into that Leo creativity, 
shining however that wants to be seen and, and live from the heart your emotional self will feel more at peace right but your rising sign your aquarius rising is the part of you that's supposed to take that inner child by the hand to help you become more cancerian okay right? which uh -huh. is close connections so right. the irony is is actually you're being asked as an aquarius rising to spread yourself out into the world in order to then generate close connections mm -hmm. right to become yeah. more humanitarian in order to bring that into your own environment mm -hmm. right but because all star signs have a positive and negative reflection and and if you think about it as ego right because i i kind of look at the rising sign like it's your it's your teenage ego that hasn't fully developed yet it's that that's actually where your journey's at you're becoming more cancerian but your journey's within the rising sign right okay so if you were to look at the positives and negatives of aquarius the positives would be that the humanitarian they go on out in the world the caring about the people on the planet um the advancements and all of that consciousness right absolutely yeah. but the negatives would be disconnection so your battle would then mm -hmm. be allowing, you know allowing that leo heart to come out with the Qu aquarius like no 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 we need to stay far back from people we need to you know be logical because it's all about the intellect and the thinking and so the path for you as aquarius rising is actually to release yourself from overthinking mm -hmm. and trying to process emotion through thinking you know that's your alarm that means <laughs> It's your alarm going off in the background. <laughs> it's like perfect timing that an ambulance yeah. would roll by to like get me to wake up, right? I I, yeah. I really like that explanation and I have a tendency to like fight for the underdog and root mm -hmm. for the, I, I like yes. the champion for the little guy, right? Mm -hmm. And in my business, I see this in, in your reflection today is that mm -hmm my purpose is to share the benefits of fitness and nutrition and personal growth for mental health. And I want to do that on a global scale. But what okay. happens for me is that I lose connection to my one-on-one -on -one clients when I try to do that. So I hear my growth ah. path in there, like spot on. It's crazy yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Hi, Amber. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Amber. Yeah, yeah, Amber yeah. Kiera uh, is a phenomenal person. And I just want to welcome her to the chat. Hello, Amber. Hi, everyone on Facebook as well. Hello, Mesa. No, whether who's still here. Let, let mm -hmm. me know who's here. We're on StreamYard, so I might not be able to see your name. For some reason, it shows some people's and it doesn't show mm. everybody's. We're talking about astrology and the Enneagram and how they relate. Right. I'm going through Dave's astrology. But, My chart. Super interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, looking at this stuff really helps you to navigate yourself it's like oh that's why i do that so instead of and especially with other people actually instead of looking at other people and going why are they doing that i would never do that when you then go oh they're taurus that's why they do that <laughs> you know? and i love to i love to expand on that too because i, I think that that's what helped me start the podcast in the first place is like I was struggle mm. I was struggling in relationships with other people. Okay. Whether that be a friendship, a work relationship, mm -hmm. or a romantic relationship. And I really wanted to uncover why I was seeing so much conflict internally here and then with others too. So that's a really good point of understanding myself to yeah. understand others. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean even in you saying that, you can see the Aquarian reflection, right? <laughs> you can, right? And But it's not like a, a bad thing because it's like your, that's your path. So when you, when you look at it and you go, oh, that's my path, then you can stop beating yourself up for not being the thing that everybody else or you think you're supposed to be. You can just mm -hmm. say, well, that's what I'm here to reflect on. You know, I can see some of my crew saying hi. Hello, Belma. Hi, Christoph. Yeah, hello to everyone. I I hope this conversation resonates with somebody like Amber who joined. Uh, if I remember correctly, she's also an achiever on the Enneagram. 
Oh, it'd be interesting to know what her sun sign is. Does she know? Does she know any? I, I don't know, Amber. If you're on Instagram still tuning in, go ahead and comment below your details so that um, Gail can talk a little bit more about the Achiever Enneagram type and yeah. how the ast astrological chart will come into play here. Yeah, that'd be cool. That see. would be fun. I love doing this yeah. live stuff and yeah. and seeing familiar faces and. It's so it's so much fun. I love it. I don't see many people. There's people on Facebook, but not many people chatting. Please let us know who's here. Feel free mm -hmm. to join in. Are you confused? <laughs> you're confused. Also, you might have joined midway through and be like, "What are they talking about?" Yeah, like last time, we're we're covering a lot of information very very quickly. So, yeah, uh, just yeah, yeah. raise your hand if you want us to slow down a little bit, and we'll we'll kind yeah. of expand on one of these exactly. items. Mm -hmm. Natalie just said. Dude, a good friend of mine and I figured out I'm a loyalist. What ah, the six. Mean? Ah, the six. Oh, it's the six. Okay, because I don't know. Okay, mm. explain this. I just interviewed a, a, a podcast guest. The, actually, the last two episodes mm -hmm. um, are both the loyalists on the Enneagram. And what they love, what they're, what they're seeking is certainty. So they want to know the answers to the questions before the questions get asked. So, I'm laughing because I know Natalie. <laughs> is that is that true? Is that spot on? I would say so. Okay, yeah, I would say so. And Natalie, and while we're and while we're talking about connections with other people, the loyalist has this very unique ability to bring people close to themselves so that they won't get hurt. So you know, yeah, keep your keep your friends close and your enemies closer mm -hmm. that is the mm -hmm. six the loyalist to a t <laughs> natalie's like no yeah. <laughs> or yes that explains <laughs> everything <laughs> yeah it's true and that, do you know what natalie i'm trying to remember because i've done a astrology session with natalie but i can't remember what you are right this moment oh wait hold on on my course it was funny we had two people who had exactly the same moon sign rising sign and sun sign it's never happened before and natalie's one of them so mm -hmm. she's gemini moon i remember this because she was like i don't want the gemini moon <laughs> you know? why gemini why wouldn't moon. why wouldn't somebody want the gemini moon so i think some of the star signs let, let's say all the star signs have the negative reflections that we don't want and there are some particular star signs that people just really don't want the negative parts of it. They think it's like terrible. So Gemini is the twins. And this means there can be constant debate within the self over and over and over of what the right thing is to do. And if somebody has wounded that person, then there's just the debate on what they're, you know, not like kind of vindictive, but just like, yeah, just a constant chatter. Like it doesn't let up. Mm -hmm. You know, so instead of like trying to soothe one inner child, you've got twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you okay. A little bit more work on your emotions if it's a moon sign. Mm -hmm. You know, they like, yeah. <laughs> they, they want to just play and have fun. They don't want to, you know, they, they kind of don't want to become too serious. But the problem is, is that chatter can get them caught up in a loop. You know, the chatter is annoying, says <laughs> Natalie. Yes. It's very annoying but it's okay yeah let me you know <laughs> let me kind of uh let me kind of challenge the gemini yeah. the the gemini a little bit right that's the one we were mm -hmm. talking about the twins yeah. and the leo part of me is imagining that if i were to hurt that person's feelings i would feel so terrible about it and what would yeah. the gemini be feeling if a leo hurts them personally um gemini would it depends. It can become victimized because it can go spinning round and round and round in their own thoughts. So let's say all of us have an inner critic, right? And we all can do that to ourselves. We go in a space where we're like, that person hates me, hmm. right? But the Gemini will do it in a, in a kind of full forced conversation that goes on and on and on and spins out of control. Mm -hmm. So if and especially with the Leo, right? If you're mm. a Leo and you hurt me, then you've you've probably done it in a way that's like, you still, you're kind of, you know, do you mean like the Leo and it's negative? <laughs> well, that's why I asked is because okay. I'd love to expand a little bit more on this because yeah, yeah, yeah. 
in in relating or in relationships, mm -hmm. if there's a Leo and a Gemini not talking about the hurt or oh, the see, conflict, okay, then the Leo is almost like beating themselves up for hurting the other person, and the Gemini is taking on that victim that victim role and yeah, ruminating yeah. about mm -hmm. the scenario. Mm -hmm. And then when they just get together and they connect and they talk, how would that well, kind of might go? You did this and you did that and you hurt me and it was like this and it was like that and you should have done this and you shouldn't have done that and it would go on and on and on and on and for the leo the leo person just wouldn't be able to do that for very long you know so if, um, i'm not saying they wouldn't be able to hold space but they wouldn't be able to do that for very long because that's like daggers going in mm -hmm. you know it's like yeah like you know like if you imagine um I don't know why I've got that in my head. I forgot what it is. What was the, there was a book and a movie where they went to like Lilliput and there was like a big, you know, the guy's like a big giant and then all the little people forgotten what hmm. it's called. Hmm. Anyway, but basically they're all like firing at this giant. Now he, th he just thinks he's a normal man, but to them he's this giant. So they're trying to kill him with these tiny little spears or something, right? And yeah. Kind of like that. It'd be like, a Leo would would be able to take that, but then they would get to a point where they just would zone out of it or walk away from it. Right, right, right. You know. Yeah, that then, makes sense. Yeah, because for the Am Leo, I, it's like mm -hmm. the Leo wants to live from the heart, and Gemini is a little bit wrapped up. It's an air sign, so it's a little bit wrapped up in thinking. And so, Natalie's path actually, she's Taurus rising, so Taurus is much more grounded. Taurus needs to have like its beautiful space, right? It needs to have its things. If she has that and she feels safe, then there'll be less of that chatter. Mm, good. But yeah, it's not easy when it when it comes when we're we're talking really here about like intimate relationships and, and using the star signs to kind of navigate that. If you have moon signs that complement one another and you have other aspects in your chart that complement one another, it's going to be easier because you kind of get what one another means mm -hmm. does this make sense yeah it does it's resonating a lot i i asked there's leo in me there's leo okay. and my daughter her birthday is august 15th okay. and okay and so when we're talking about relationships mm -hmm. it's so great to have understanding of ourselves and others absolutely absolutely when, when you said about your daughter it makes me think of my daughter so my daughter has a cancer moon. Mm -hmm. I love her already. <laughs> yeah. uh, she has Sagittarius rising and she's an Aries sun. So I'm kind of watching with interest because now she's 14. Those aspects are coming more into play. So it's going to be interesting watching all of that fire. I don't know how it will display itself. But as a cancer baby, um, the great thing about me having a Scorpio moon is that we I can understand her sensitivity because I grew up as a very sensitive child. I was really, well, what everyone else would call overly emotional. I was like the crybaby. I could feel everything. I was overwhelmed a lot. I, I didn't do well with um, anyone who had a lot of fire energy, who was angry, would freak me out. You know, I, I was like, I had to keep myself to myself. You know, I'd be in my room with my music because that helped me to release emotion that was a, my way to connect with it you know a little bit like the little mermaids <laughs> i always think like you know this kind of desire to be in the world but not really being able to be in it so i could see she was almost exactly the same not totally a little bit more moody <laughs> right but that thing helped me to really to know her you know mm -hmm. <clears throat> so maybe with your daughter it'd be a good idea to look at her chart i can look at it later and sure. then just see what what's navigating there emotionally mm -hmm. and maybe also especially with an aquarius rising because I, I guess you guys are close but maybe because of that aquarius rising maybe sometimes you might look like you're not really emotional that's what i want to say i don't know i don't know how well you connect emotionally with her but right aquarius rising just has a you know a little bit of an issue with being able to actually show that, you know? To yeah, the challenge it. and the struggle with vulnerability resonates with me a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
uh, you know, she's a peacemaker on the Enneagram. So she okay. likes, uh, wants to avoid conflict in certain ways and wants to okay. keep the peace in the room in a mother, okay. in a motherly kind of way. You know, she's okay. a great, a yeah, great yeah. human, she very, like Libra. she's Libra very conscious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, let's close this out. Cause I've just got a few more minutes yeah. before I head off to jujitsu today. Okay. Let's close it out with like, uh, some, some closing thoughts on how the Enneagram and astrology, uh, parallel. Cause I've heard a lot of parallels so far mm -hmm. in my own chart and my own Enneagram okay. type. So okay. as you, as you learn more about your two wing three with a one-to-one -one connection yeah. as a subtype, how does yeah. that parallel to your own astrological chart? So what I see is that if we look at the moon sign as the inner child and the feminine, the rising sign is your kind of, let's say your ego, helping you to become more of your sun sign, like heading, let's say into the masculine, right? So learning how to navigate all of that, I can see that in myself, like my two being the helper is absolutely like my inner child was like that. Like, I think I told you last time. Look at me, report, look at me, I'm helping, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, or, in order to be validated and approved, because that was the only way I felt I could get it. So at school, in my first year at school, on my report card, it actually said that I went around the class trying to help the people who needed help. You know, so I was five years old, so that's like, you know, ingrained in me. But the three... I really see that as really embracing more of the Capricorn sun that I have, the, the part of me that I obviously am destined to become more of, but I just could not relate to that for so many years. I did not, you know, I had little reflections of it. Like I wanted to go and learn to sing at college and people were like, you're too shy. You're not confident enough. Like, why are you doing that? Like, and I could feel this thing inside of me. And the other part of me was like, no, like, don't do that. It's too scary. But I could feel that thing. And so I followed it and it took a long time. But now I have that three wing that's come in, which I see as more of my Capricorn self, you know, and the Aries rising that I have, which is helping me to do that. Because it's like Aries wants to go ahead. It doesn't want to just wallow in the waters, you know, like my Scorpio moon. It wants to move. It's like, come on, let's go. Let's move forward. So All right. I would definitely say there's a huge correlation there. I can see. Well, very well said. Yeah, that that parallels very, very well for those personality types and your mm. and your astrology. Yeah, it's super interesting. Me and Dave could talk about this all day. I think <laughs> we could just go on and on. Yeah, all we need from every listener is their enneagram type, yeah. their wing, their subtype, and then their their birth date year and time right yeah, <laughs> and then we'll, right. we'll just yeah, exactly we'll, do, we'll have to create something because it's yeah we could do that yeah do you want to do a workshop together yeah let's do okay that. I all think right it'd be super interesting if totally anyone's agree. interested in that please let us know because i think yeah. it'd be super fun because it's it 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 makes it just i love looking at people that's the scorpio moon i love looking at your stuff even when you don't want to look at your stuff i'll hold your hand and i'll go in there in amongst all of your shit and I'll shine up the gold that's in there. I don't care. I'm, <laughs> I'm all for that. Right. You know? So yeah. And then, and me over here is the challenger. Is like, oh, you want to hide from that? Oh no, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take a look at that. And I'm gonna ask you challenging questions along the way to to get yeah. you to think and feel and to take a look inward at yourself in the mirror because mm -hmm. that's our that's our true path to growth is looking inward. All of the answers yeah. are here. Yeah. So that is the perfect combination of Leo and Aquarius. Like it was, <laughs> that was perfect. You know? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to raise both hands above my head and <laughs> own it and challenge others to take a step forward and to take a step in, into the shit, because that is where we find our growth and our path to greatness and our true authentic so selves. True. Yeah, I love it. Thank you for yeah. this conversation, Dave. It's been super cool. Belma's already saying she's interested. So, yeah. Amazing. Let's set it up. I, I think that we've got something really creative and really yeah. innovative here and really informative, too, to help people understand themselves a, a better so that they can relate yeah. to better uh, to other people and and help each other feel understood. Absolutely.
and it's let's fun, do it so that's yeah it. <laughs> yeah let's do it all right okay amazing cool all right i'll let you go back to jujitsu because i don't want you to miss a lot in your session so right amazing. the challenger Can't in me <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> thank you everyone appreciate thank the time you. yeah bye guys bye insta guys Thank you so very much for tuning in to today's episode with Gail Evans. I hope you had a lot of fun as I did uh, li- taping this live event with her via Instagram and Facebook Live. If you're looking for a little bit more fun and a little bit more self-awareness through your astrology chart and the Enneagram personality system, join us for that free webinar. We're going to be hosting that here pretty soon. Sign up for more details in the link below. If you're looking for a little bit more support right now in your relationships, whether that be a family member, a friend, or a romantic relationship, join us in one of our private virtual group coaching sessions free for a week. We're going to dig into self-awareness through the Enneagram, attachment theory, and understanding how leadership comes into your relationship. So join us free for one week by clicking the link in the show notes below. Until next week, this is Dave Glazer in Denver, Colorado, wishing you health and happiness wherever you're at in the world.